These are the 12 things to know before moving to Northport, Florida. And we're getting started right now. Number one is prices. So I guess this isn't like something you have to be aware of, but this is one that you want to be aware of. And I think it's a good thing. Yes. And depending on what you're looking for in a city, Northport might be just the right fit for you because of their lower prices. Yeah. Compared to some of the other cities that we usually cover on the channel, like you know, Venice, Welland Park, which is kind of Northport and Sarasota. even, yeah, it's definitely Sarasota and even Inglewood, which is a little bit, you know, more affordable of a beach town. Northport's usually going to save you some money. And because of that, you know, the, the price point is very appealing to a lot of families and just people in general, I think if they like some of the other things that we're going to talk about throughout the rest of this video. But on average, what would you say is like the average, you know, or the median sale price, you know, that people could expect for a house in Northport? Yeah, so the median sales price, I think it's a little skewed because of that whole well and park area. But in Northport, you can find new construction homes for as little as three twenty, three thirty thousand dollars, and we're talking like maybe like a fifteen hundred square foot home, sixteen hundred square foot home, three bed, two bath, and obviously a little less for something that's not brand new. Yes, which there is a lot of that in Northport as well. You know, there's a lot of homes that are like five, ten, fifteen, maybe twenty years old that you can get for, you know, a little bit less than that. Or you can find homes within that same price range, but they'll be bigger even, you know, if they are resale homes, maybe built in the 2000s, early 2000s, but they're going to be bigger maybe for the same price. And keep in mind, this video is coming out in early 2024. So, you know, the real estate <laughs> changes have been a roller coaster the last couple of years. So I guess we'll see what happens in the future, but probably, you know, as of right now, it's looking like things are kind of staying kind of flat, maybe going slightly down, but maybe once interest starts going back down, you might see those prices go back up. So that's just kind of where they're at right now. And within that price and, you know, homes, we should probably talk a little bit as far as like, you know, what that looks like compared to other areas with the, you know, pro of buying in Northport is besides the price. Yeah. So Northport could be very appealing for someone who's looking for maybe having a bigger backyard, being a little more spread out. Some people don't want to be like right on top of each other or homes being built too close together. So Northport would be great for that. Unless obviously if you're in an HIA community, then the homes are a little more closer together. But I would say Northport still, even if you are part of an HIA community, you are able to find bigger lots than like say in Venice. In Venice, you're going to be a little more closer together. Also, I think it's a little more common in Northport to have homes that have like, you know, at least three bedrooms, four bedrooms, maybe even five bedrooms. Not that they don't exist in the other surrounding cities, but it's a lot easier to find those kinds of homes in Northport. It's pretty much the norm, I would say. More common, yeah, it's bigger homes because Northport, it's more family oriented while Venice or Englewood, it's more retiree friendly. So homes are going to be smaller and the smaller homes are more popular here because snowbirds don't need a lot of room while families do need a lot of room, a bigger home. And that's why Northport is so appealing. Number two is seasonal migration. And what we mean by that is Northport, while there are some retirees and there are some snowbirds that do come to Northport for the winter, it is not as pronounced pronounced as like venice even sarasota you can see an influx of people yeah. there i mean sarasota also it's it's not much different but there are a lot more seasonal residents in sarasota than in northport yeah and even like inglewood you know to, to the south is you know similar situation like you go during like the winter months or especially during like spring break like it, it gets packed i mean there's definitely differences you know that you'll want to be aware of in northport as well you know winter months are going to be a little more busy there's going to be more people coming down so the stores are more busy the traffic gets a little bit heavier but it's definitely not on the level of your venice your inglewood your sarasota because northport isn't a beach town it's an option to get close to the beach without having to pay beach town prices and because of that you also get less of the people coming to influx the city during the winter months to beach it up the next thing that you should know before the next thing that you should know is that if you are looking to buy or sell a home in the northport area you're going to need a good real estate team Make sure to call, text, or email us, 941-221-1897. We'd love to help you out. Next thing to know about Northport before moving to the area is the weather. Now, this is going to be pretty similar across the board for all the cities that we're going to do this for, this what to be aware of before moving list. But basically, during the summer months, you're going to have more of your hurricane season. You're going to have more storms. Uh, hurricanes are not very common to hit the Gulf Coast area, especially this area, you know, kind of southwest-ish, south-central-west-ish, 
area of the Gulf Coast, but it can happen and you should expect more humidity, lots more heat pretty much every single day and a 30 minute to hour shower just about every day, sometimes longer, sometimes it'll maybe just go like five minutes or not at all, but just about every day. And then your winters are perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Winter months are perfect. And, and this goes for pretty much all of Florida. It's, you know, the same thing across the board. But Northport has a lot more trees than any city really that we've seen in Florida. I mean, Orlando has a lot of like oaks and trees, but when you think of Florida, you think palm trees. And that I remember the first time we visited Northport, I was like, oh, wow, like the, there is a lot of trees. There is some palm trees as well. But I feel like that also helps with that nice breeze. And in Northport, you're a little more inland too. So you're a little more protected from hurricanes and floods. There is the Mayaka River, which could be an issue. So how builders are mitigating that is they'll actually raise up your lot. So you're out of the flood zone. The road, you know, might flood but your home likely won't. And one other thing I think we should talk about, there's kind of those in-between seasons, your fall and your spring. Those are great because the weather's pretty much perfect then, but then in the winter, you're gonna get days that if you're from like the North or the Midwest or something like that, some days will feel like summer, some days will feel like spring or fall from like up north. So you kind of get a nice mix of weather during the winter months and then pretty much perfect weather in, well, in my opinion, it's right around 80 in during the spring and the fall here. And then, yeah, your summers are hot and some people like me like it, but a lot of people don't. The next one is Northport is growing very, very fast. There is a lot of people moving down to the area from different parts of the country and from different areas of Florida as well. People are moving to Northport because, you know, the war has gotten out. You are able to get an, a really nice home for your money and still relatively small. Like Northport area, it's pretty expansive and it's, you know, a big area, but it doesn't feel quite as big as like, say, Miami or like even Orlando. Yeah, the population is actually somewhat substantial, but because there's just so many empty lots and so much spread out, which we'll talk about the lots in a little bit. It, it doesn't feel congested or busy or highly populated, if that makes sense. It's got this weird feel. It's almost like country, but city at the same yeah. time. We like to call it rural suburban. And yeah, it's, it's a, got a nice feel for that. But, you know, keep in mind, since it is growing, there are going to be changes. And I guess you could say this for pretty much everywhere in Florida. But if you move to a city and expect it to be like exactly the way it was when you found out about it or first visited it, you're going to be disappointed because Florida is growing. I think everyone knows that at this point. So if you go into it knowing that, okay, there might be some more building, you know, it might change a little, I think you'll be okay. That being said, with as much empty land as there is in Northport, I think it's going to take a really, really long time for it to feel like a, a dramatic change. And you're still going to have, you know, a lot of space between homes and, and there's not a lot of like apartments or like high rise condos. So there is a lot of single family homes and you still have big lots within those homes that, you know, make it feel like you still have enough room and you don't feel like on top of each other. Yeah, and I think one thing to keep in mind too is like Northport's been in like a lot of, you know, lists for fastest growing cities and just on the news, you know, because of the explosive growth that it's seen. So it's really interesting that it's kind of been on the radar for that, but, still feels small and it feels like even if it continues to grow because of the way it's all spread out and it's mostly single family homes, it keeps things from feeling too congested and keeps things pretty quiet. Another thing you should know about Northport, especially if you want to build your home, is that there is a lot of opportunity for vacant lots. You're able to find vacant lots pretty much all over Northport. It just depends, you know, some areas of Northport are a little more built out, more developed, while others are still very untouched, very rural. But with that comes some challenges. And that is that if you're in the less developed area of Northport, now the electricity might be farther away. So now you have to bring the electric to your lot. And that obviously is a cost, you know, that you should budget for because depending how far the last pole is, that's how expensive it could be. So if you have you know, the last poll, if it's nearby, then it's going to be only a couple thousand dollars. But if it's farther away, then that could be pretty expensive. Also, things to consider would be, well, one, the opportunity to buy maybe multiple lots and you could have a really, really big yard or, you know, something like that. You could maybe buy, you know, if the road's here, you might have a lot here where you build your house and one behind it or maybe two to the side, you know. So there's a lot of possibilities for cool things to do like that. But you also want to account for some of the wildlife protections as well in the area. So, you know, things like scrub jays are 
protected go for tortoises and those are things that basically have to you have to pay a fee to get re what's the word they use for it? relocated to a new home so those are little things to keep in mind and those animals will maybe decide to you know all of a sudden you're about to build and they're like nope this is my home right now so then that could be an issue you might not have an issue you might have one there and then they move before you're about to build but it's something that you have to be aware of and account for the next thing you should be aware of with moving to northport is welland park now we're not going to talk too much about welland park in this video because we're kind of keeping it separate technically welland park is northport as far as taxes utilities and things like that but they do feel very very separate and very different so in this video we're talking mainly about northport it's important that you understand that there is a very big difference in the lifestyle between those two welland park's a little bit more of like a master plan community with lots of you know little communities within it that have their own amenities a brand new downtown in welland park and on the whole nine yards but we're going to do another video uh, about welland park and giving you the things that you should know about in the future so stay tuned for that but northport is kind of what we're giving you in this video next thing you should know about northport is that there is a lot of shopping some limitations with that so they have quite a few department stores and also port charlotte is just on the road with even more shopping but you're not going to find a like a mall or an outlet mall you're going to find more department stores throughout the city but if you do want to shop till you drop you can drive down to sarasota which is only 35 to 45 minutes away depending on traffic and also there is a mall in port charlotte there is not a lot of stores that are you know open but there is quite a few yet also department stores like bells old navy there is tj maxx in in the city as well and there's a lot of grocery options both uh between between port charlotte really and northport you got a sam's club in port charlotte and northport you got a walmart neighborhood market regular walmart of course Publix. Publix everywhere that's every city in florida yes there's also bj's which is pretty similar to a uh, costco or sam's club Win Dixie, which is also very popular here. Win Dixie and Publix are very popular here for some reason. And also there's a save a lot. It's not as popular. Yeah. And within Northport as well, you've got, you know, a lot of the other like main things you're gonna, gonna want, like a Home Depot, you're gonna have your Lowe's, a Dick's Sporting Goods, which is nice because in Venice we don't have any really sporting goods stores like that. So they got most of your basics covered. I mean definitely all your basics covered for sure, your basics, but maybe like certain more, you know particular places that you would want to go to like maybe a Kohl's or a Nordstrom Rack stuff like that you're not going to get but again if you want that you can go you know a lot of it'll be either in Port Charlotte or Sarasota or Fort Myers really isn't too far either so you know about a 40-ish minute drive north or south can get you just about everything you want. One other thing to note with that is that Northport doesn't actually have a downtown so there is not like going to the downtown and shopping around downtown there's none of that in northport but if you do want something like that venice is just on the road which is only a 35 minute drive depending on what side of northport you're on and also that new master plan well and park community that will have a lot of like restaurants shopping things like that that will be closer to northport as well yeah you don't get that full-on like walkable district but that kind of strip mall outlet mall area by like dicks and things like that is like yes. semi walkable feels like they're like making it almost a downtown but it's not really but it's not the same but you do have a lot of shopping just yeah not the full walk go you know eat here and shop here and socialize with people sort of experience that you get with a downtown yeah it's almost like you would have to drive in between the some of the stores because they're a little farther away from each other but you could also walk from one and to the other another thing you should know before you move to northport is insurance now insurance in florida i'm sure you probably heard by now has been kind of a weird crazy thing the last few years there are some new companies coming in that will help bring some competition or hopefully bring the rates down but rates have went up significantly anywhere from you know some people we've heard time and a half sometimes people two three times i think if you shop around you can keep it to that time and a half to maybe two times what it was and also if you have a new roof you're Premium is going to be a lot more competitive than if you have an older roof. A lot of the people insurances that did double or triple in some cases are because the roofs are like 20 years or older and they're, they haven't been able to, you know, account for that expense by replacing the roof. So now they're kind of 
stock paying those premiums. Yeah, and some other things to keep in mind too, is it, is the home in a flood zone? Is it elevated? Do you have hurricane impact windows or shutters? You know, how old is the home? They're gonna look at all those kinds of things and that's gonna kind of determine what your rate is. But you could be looking at anywhere from 1500 to $5,000 a year, may, maybe a little more, I guess, depending on the kind of home you have and what kind of condition it's in. So that's something you'll definitely wanna budget for. And one other thing, back to the roofs, if it's 15 years or older, a lot of insurance companies just will cover. not cover you, period. So you wanna keep that in mind as well. If you're gonna buy a place with an older roof, that's an expense that you're gonna either have to, you know, if, if it's 14 years old, you're gonna have to replace that pretty dang quick. And if it's 15 plus, then yeah, you're probably gonna to need to replace it now. Or if you can go without insurance, if you're buying the whole house cash, you, you can risk it. But the roofs do get a little more brittle a little more quickly down here. Another thing you should know if you're planning to move to Northport is that Single family homes are a lot more popular than even like villas or condos. We don't really have m many um, condo buildings in Northport. There are some apartments if you're you know, looking to rent, but again, it's not very common. And there are some mobile homes and manufactured homes as well, but not as common. I would say the single family homes are you know, the most popular option here in Northport. Yeah, and outside of that, I think one other thing to note is of those single family homes, the majority of them will not be in a gated community, HOA plan community. There are a few of those within actual Northport, not, you know, Welland Park, which we know is actual Northport, but gated or planned community thing is a possibility in Northport. But for the most part, you're looking at, you know, freestanding single family homes, no HOA. So if you want to live in a single family home without any restrictions, HOA, you don't care that much about sidewalks and streetlights and things like that. You're gonna like Northport, it's gonna fit you your bill perfectly, but if you do want some of that other stuff, there are options in Northport, but it's probably gonna be even more options in other cities. Next thing you should know about Northport before moving to the area is just the general feel and vibe of the area. So it is much more quiet feeling, I would say, and, and a lot of this area is pretty quiet feeling, I would say, as far as like Venice and Inglewood. Sarasota is a little busier, and definitely during the winter months, all three of those cities are kind of busy. But as a whole, no matter the season, Northport is a little bit quieter. It feels a little more nature-centric, a little bit more rural, and spread out which we kind of mentioned earlier yes i think it's a lot more quiet too i mean there is quite a bit of traffic especially on 41 because that's like one of your main roads to get pretty much everywhere but it's not crazy it's not an overwhelming big city even though it is pretty spread out and, and, and it's the land mass is huge in northport but it's not it doesn't feel like you're on top of each other, big city by any means. Don't expect, you know, sort of urban feel by any means. It's definitely more of a rural slash small town feel. And if, if that's what you're looking for, perfect. If not, you might not care for the vibe. The next thing you should know if you are planning to move to Northport is that the job selection is a little bit limited. Like in a lot of Southwest Florida, we do have a lot of customer service jobs, school jobs, you know, education healthcare, construction. construction. That's pretty much it. <laughs> and there are some like banks and office right. type jobs, but it is a lot more limited. If you want to work maybe like in a warehouse, then we do have the Amazon warehouse in Venice, which would be about 30 to 40 minute drive, depending on where you're coming from. Other than that, most people that live in Northport do work in Sarasota or Fort Myers. And I know of some people that will actually drive to like Tampa or down to Fort Myers for work as well. Yeah, Northport's actually sometimes dubbed as a bedroom community, which, you know, a lot of people basically buy a home there to get a good price. And, you know, it's good for the family and they get the yard and the whole nine yards and they basically call it a bedroom community because you sleep there and then you go somewhere else for work. You know, a lot of people will make that commute. And I think with that to its perspective, like for us, we're from a small town. So jobs within a small town are typically 10 to 15 minute drive, if that. And for people who are coming from bigger cities, their commutes are like about an hour or so. So 45 minutes, 40 minutes, maybe doesn't look as bad as like from someone who's coming from a small town where your job is like in your backyard almost. Yeah. Next thing you should be aware of with Northport is schools. So we can't technically tell you the schools are good or bad because of you know real estate laws, but what we can tell you is they rate well on a lot of lists. There's you know resources like greatschools.org or niche.com. They will give you ratings. But another thing that we can tell you is it used to be that St. Augustine was the number one county in all of Florida for school system, but recently Sarasota moved into that top spot. And guess what? Northport is in Sarasota County. So you do have that going for you. Now, if you do want to buy or sell a home in the Northport area, what should they do? 
Make sure to call, text, or email our real estate team, 941-221-1897. And if you want to know more about what it's like to live in Northport, check out this video right here. If you want to know more about Welland Park, check out this video right here. Hit the like button if you found the video helpful. Subscribe and turn on all notifications and live breezy. breezy.